one of the most important monuments of Hajj. Ever since Allah the Almighty prescribed Hajj, that is Arafat. Arafat or Arafat is the name of the day and a place. As far as the time, it is the day of the ninth day of the month of Dhul Hijjah. The ninth day of the month of Dhul Hijjah is known as the day of Arafah. The place is Arafah or Arafat. In the Quran, in Surah Al Baqarah, in ayah number 198, in a segment of it, Allah the Almighty said, فَإِذَا أَفَضْتُمْ مِنْ عَرَفَاتٍ فَاذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ عِنْدَ الْمَشْعَرِ الْحَرَامِ So he made mention in this ayah of Arafat, the valley in which all the pilgrims must spend the day or a part of the day and a part of the night or if they cannot spend any part of the day then during the night as he will be explained in details in a little bit. The Prophet said, Al Hajju Arafah. In order to perform Hajj, you must be present in Arafah on the day of Arafah. So the valley called Arafat and it is called Arafah. It is located um, about 22 kilometers away from Al Masjid Al Haram. And the distance between Arafat, this valley which is so huge. It's approximately 1.4 uh, square kilometers. That's why it encompasses millions of pilgrims, sometimes four, sometimes even more of Hujjaj every year by the grace of Allah. And its distance from Muzdalifah is six kilometers. And Arafat is distant from uh, the valley of Mina, 10 kilometers, the distance between Arafat and uh, Mina. When we come to learn about the borders of Arafat, nowadays, alhamdulillah, there are clear signs, billboards, the towers directing the Hujjaj to stay within the boundaries of the valley of Arafat because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-Hajj Arafat, the most important pillar of Hajj is Arafat. And what distinguishes Hajj from any other Umrah is being in Arafat on the ninth day of the month of Dhul Hijjah. You can perform Umrah throughout the entire year, day or night, it doesn't matter. But for the Hajj, in order to perform Hajj, you must come to the valley of Arafat on the ninth day of the month of Dhul Hijjah, which is known as the day of Arafat which is the greatest day of the entire year. Because during this day, Allah the Almighty forgives most of those whom He forgives throughout the year on the day of Arafah, He forgives their sins. In the sound hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, مَا مِنْ يَوْمٍ أَكْثَرُ مِنْ أَنْ يُعْتِقَ اللَّهُ فِيهِ عَبَدًا مِنَ النَّارِ مِنْ يَوْمِ عَرَفَةً there is no other day on which Allah forgives more people, forgives them their sins, more than on the day of Arafah. Then he said, وَإِنَّهُ لَيَدْنُوا ثُمَّ يُبَاهِي بِهِمْ الْمَلَائِكَةِ And indeed, Allah the Almighty will come close to them, descend, and will come close to the pilgrims. So in the beginning of the hadith, he was talking about the time, the day of Arafah, the ninth day of the month of Dhul Hijjah. Then by the end he said, on that day Allah comes close to our holy sky and he looks at his servants, at the hujjaj, at the pilgrims, and he is proud of them before his angels. The hujjaj gather on that day in this valley and they pray dhuhr and asr together, combined at the time of the earlier prayer, which is dhuhr. As the Prophet وسلم, arrived to Arafat and he stayed in Namira, Namira is on the borders of Arafat in the direction of the Haram. And by the way, Namira used to be a village there, then it is abandoned and it is not a part of Arafat. The Prophet وسلم, delivered the khutbah, the speech there, and he led them in Dhuhr and Asr prayer where he shortened the prayers two rakahs each and combine them 
and offer the two prayers at the time of the earlier one, which is Zuhr. Then he delved and he entered into the valley of Arafah. In the hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Arafah kulluha mawqif illa batn urana. The place which is known as urana, which has namira, it has also what is known as Masjid Namira. What is Masjid Namira? At the time of the Prophet وسلم, they used not to be any masjid there, but because Rasulullah وسلم, delivered the khutbah there, later on they built a masjid. And they kept on expanding the masjid until now it is approximately 27,000 uh, square meters. MashaAllah, it can accommodate up to 300 person at a time. This huge number gathers only once a year on the day of Arafah to attend the khutbah or the speech delivered by the Imam on that blessed day. That's why we warn people who are attending the prayer in Masjid Namira that the front part of the Masjid actually is not a part of um, Arafat and you shouldn't stay in it. They keep some partitions in order to make certain that the people who are in a state of ihram and performing uh, hajj will remain in Arafah, not outside in Namira or in Wadi or Batn Urana because the member and the mihrab in which the Imam is leading the prayer is located outside uh, the boundaries of Arafat. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, خير الدعاء دعاء يوم عرفة The hadith is collected by Imam al-Tirmidhi. The best supplication ever is the supplication which is made on the day of عرفة. And in another hadith, he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وخير ما قلت أنا والنبيون من قبلي لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير. It is very obvious from the hadith that the Prophet ﷺ recommended that the best supplication to invoke Allah with any time, especially on that day, is the invocation of monotheism, it is to declare the oneness of Allah by saying, لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له. There is no God to be worshipped but Allah alone. He has no partners in worship. له الملك وله الحمد. To him belongs the domain and the praise. وهو على كل شيء قدير. And he is indeed able to do all things. Um, as I mentioned earlier, some people call Masjid uh, نمرة. Masjid Arafah, which is okay because it is most of it now is located in Arafah. But some people call it Masjid al Nabi Ibrahim, assuming that Ibrahim السلام, had a masjid there or it was built by Prophet uh, Abraham, peace be upon him, and that is not uh, true. In Arafah, there is what is known as Jabal Arafat, Mount Arafat. The Prophet وسلم, did not actually climb the mountain. Of Arafat. Rather, he stood at the steep by the beginning of the rocks of the mountain and he said in the hadith, وَقَفْتُ هُنَا وَعَرَفَتُ كُلُّهَا موقف. So, we learn from this hadith that the valley of Arafah is also called Arafah in the hadith and in the ayah Arafat. So, you can say Arafah or Arafat. And the Prophet ﷺ indicated in this hadith that anywhere that you stand in Arafah on the ninth day of the month of Dhul Hijjah is valid. It is a valid place to stand or to sit or to recline or to rest. Okay, but the word wuquf which is standing because most of the people tend to stand either praying or making a dua. Some people try to make an effort to climb the mountain and collect some stones from the mountain which have nothing to do with the rituals of the Hajj. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, عَرَفَةُ كُلُّهَا موقف. Wherever you happen to stand in or sit in Arafah on that day, it is a valid place and it will do it. The uh, 
present time in Arafah on the ninth day beginning from as zawal when the sun moves away from its meridian yani it is the noon time or at the prayer time of Salatul Dhuhr this is where we pray both prayers on that day Dhuhr and Asr together combined at the uh, Dhuhr time then you shall stand there or stay there in Arafat until sunset a very common error that people do when they want to be the traffic so they leave from Arafat before sunset according to the vast majority of the fuqaha the Jewish that if a person left from Arafat and made ifada to Muzdalifa or to anywhere else before sunset then they have violated a wajib and for their hajj to be complete they must offer a fidya to slaughter a sheep and to be distributed entirely among the poor people of Mecca with the exception of Imam al-Shafi'i may Allah have mercy on him who said that if people have left before sunset they have made an, an error but they are not required to give uh, a fidya if a person was not able to come to Arafah to the valley of Arafat on that day before sunset it will be sufficient also to come and stay at night because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith when he stated um, Arafah to kulluha mawqif man jaa laylata jam'a qabla tulu'i al-fajri faqad adrak that's a sound hadith Whoever happened to come to Arafah any time even at night as long as it is before the dawn of the following morning which will be the 10th day of the month of Dhul Hijjah then Faqad Adrak then he have caught the proper time to be in Arafah and his Hajj as far as spending some time in Arafah will be valid. The most proper presence in Arafah is as I mentioned earlier um, from uh, the Zawal and you can attend before that according to Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal even from the dawn so that's why because because of the very huge number and the very heavy traffic that people have to leave earlier than that but what counts as spending time in Arafah from Zawal till the dawn of the following morning which is the 10th day of the month of Dhul Hijjah um, the day of Arafah and being in Arafah on that day is also perceived as a Eid day for them, for the Hujjaj. A Jewish man once said to Umar ibn Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, you guys have such a great verse in the Quran that if this verse was revealed to us, the Jews would have taken the day of its revelation a day of celebration and a day of Eid. Allah the Almighty said in the third ayah of Surah Al-Ma'idah, الْيَوْمَ أَكْمَلْتُ لَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ وَأَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتِي وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينًا And this ayah is such a great news that number one it means Allah the Almighty said Today I have, I have completed for you your religion and I have perfected my favor upon you and I'm pleased with Islam as your religion. This ayah, uh, brothers and sisters, was revealed upon uh, on Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of Arafah when he was in the valley of Arafah. Umar ibn Khattab radiyallahu an said, by Allah I know where and when it was revealed. It was revealed on a Eid day because the day of Arafah on that day coincides also Friday in the valley of Arafat. Brothers and sisters, indeed the day of Arafah is the greatest day of uh, the year. Um, many people ask, why was it called Arafah? There are many suggestions and many athar in this regard, but we cannot confirm either one of them. For instance, they say it was called Arafah or Arafat because when Adam and Eve were sent down from heaven they were lost and they didn't get to see each other but they finally got to meet in this valley so they got to see and meet each other in Arafat from knowing each other 
Also, Arafah, because the pilgrims get to meet one another, and nowadays we see millions of people getting to meet and uh, knowing each other, introducing each other to others, and so on. And it is also suggested that because people acknowledge their sins and ask Allah the Almighty for forgiveness on that day. Either way, brothers and sisters, the day of Arafah by itself is the greatest day. But besides that, there is no significance whatsoever for visiting Arafat or the Valley of Arafat on any other day of the year. Other than for tourism or to be acquainted with the place and to, to see the place without being crowded, uh, such as on the day of Arafat, the ninth day. But there is no special virtues or reward for going to Arafat on any day other than the ninth day of the month of Dhul-Hijjah.